Mr. Washington. I'm Detective Moon Cox. Hey, sorry, I'm late. It's okay. Mr. Washington, I understand you have some notions about this case as it pertains to Native American mysticism. I believe the killer is delving into shamanism. Oh, really, Mr. Washington? I was advised by a friend that he wants to have the power of an animal. You know, I tried to talk to your friend. She said I wouldn't understand. She said you'd know how to explain it. I don't know anything specific. The paint marks on the child have symbolic meaning. It's a spiritual thing. I was hoping you could let me read over the police report on Mary Randall. Maybe it could help me figure out why he's doing it. Let me just say, I don't put a whole lot of credence into that sort of thing, Mr. Washington. But this is just beyond anyone's wildest concepts. I've talked to a lot of people in my line of work about this. And they've seen everything. I mean everything. Yet this is just beyond anyone's wildest concepts. I'm going to need all your help. We all try and work together here, okay? That's what's needed here. Was there anything else? Yeah, I want every file you have on former officer Michael De Pasquale, who's now with the Aberdeen Sheriff's Department. I'll get all the information that I can on him. Let me ask you something. You think he has anything to do with this? Okay, I'm going to share with you what I presently know. As you can see, Mary Randall was young, blonde, and had green eyes. I believe this killer was searching out a young woman who looked like someone he knew or used to know. He was probably uh, after an authority figure from his past, like his mother. As for the work on the M.O., the bodies have been compared in great detail, and there are some notable similarities. Okay, both were sexually assaulted before and after death. There were remnants of ritual markings on both victims, including paint the same colors and type were also found on the young actress, Jessica Rogers. Uh, in addition, they found human teeth marks on both victims. It appears our killer is feeding off his victims like an animal. Eating them? Well, parts of them. You know, around the throat, the abdomen, the soft parts where an animal would choose to feed. Am I correct? An animal will go to the soft parts first. That's correct. You know, how can a guy do this and function in a regular society? There's no problem functioning. His world is divided between night and day, Mr. Cox. Keep your profile. The killer is a white male between the ages of 25 and 35. He's likely the only child. His father was probably dead, and he was left with his mother who abused him in who knows how many ways. Despite this, he is a strong personality, but is something of a loner. He is sexually competent, but likely not married. He would be living with his mother if she were alive. His problem is, he believes she is chasing him in spirit form. He is an urge to rid himself of her by killing children. Somehow he can't run far enough away from her. It's hard to know for certain. But I believe he works within the Aberdeen Park system. He will have a set number of victims. And he will watch the animal eat all of them. He 
believes that by doing so, he has assimilated all the parts and spirits that the animal has within it. With this power, he can then get rid of his mother's spirits and end the hunting. This guy lives in a fantasy world. He wants to relive the events over and over, filling himself up with the feeding of the crime. He loves to see pictures of the victims and feel personal items taken from each kill. This spurs him to the next victim. It's a continuing process. When do you think he'll strike again? The last two victims died on or near full moon. Likely on. Hmm. We've got less than a week to find this guy. I'll get the deep Pasquale file. What is it? Hey, guess what I found? This is interesting. I have the deep Pasquale file right in front of me and I can't believe what the fuck I'm reading. You see, they, they do all this cloning and stuff and it gets out of hand. They, they could be growing fucking monsters for all we know. There's something out there that they won't tell you about. It's a cover up. Like I say, I'll bet you anything. What are they covering up? They got the evidence. I have it right here in front of me. They're just keeping you in the dark. There's something out there that's not human. Believe me, if there's any monsters to be found, they're perfectly human. In this case, anyway. You see, I underlined the first initial of each victim's first name. It had to mean something. Okay, J for Jessica Rogers, O for Olivia McKay. This is how he escapes his mother. Detective Michael De Pasquale's mother's name was Mary Jo De Pasquale. I don't know why he used it, the first name of his first victim instead of initials, but I guess 10 more dead children would be the last links of this sick chain. I just hope it'll bring an end to this.